Uh, my name is Neil McKay, I'm from the English department and... I'm Helen Rogers from Food and Textiles. And as you can see, we're taking you through mind mapping. Okay, giving you an idea about how mind maps are used and how they can be useful and things. And hopefully give you a wee taste of actually making up your own <coughs> map. Um, so that's the plan. Um, so as we said, the purpose of this session is to introduce technical mind mapping. And it's one that a lot of pupils find really useful to further studies, including the lovely young people at the back. They do mind maps in the past, haven't you? <laughs> yep, so they find it. <laughs> Yeah, they're going to agree anyway, they find it very useful. Um, so we're hoping to introduce you to the technique itself. I know some of you will be familiar with mind maps, but there might be some of you who are less familiar. And hopefully you'll find out a wee bit about how it can be used to help improve your child health and what they're studying and things like that. Okay, now to start us off, um, we're going to try and warm up our brains a wee bit to just get into the idea of what mind mapping can be useful for. So you'll find a wee bit of white plastic in front of the board pen, that's called a show me board. So if you can arm yourselves with a show me board, please, we're going to give you a wee task. All we want you to do is count how many squares you can see and just write the answer just in a big number on the show me board, please, so and then hold it up when you've written your number down, okay? So all you do, write down the number, hold it up so we can see it. Let's have a wee count, how many squares can you see? And then when you're happy, write down your number on the show me board and hold it up. I think that's enough to envy it. Okay, we're on the right line. Some people go in 11, most people go in 12, some people go in 13. Uh, did you bother to count anyone before, <laughs> before we started? Um, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> 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 You've just some luck. Well, we'll, 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 we'll tell you at the end. We'll review, we'll review all at the end what the answers are. Um, okay, so if you clean your show reports, please shoot a wee paper towel in front of you. And your next task is how many hearts can you see this time? Okay, there we go. Okay, okay, most people go in six. Uh -huh. yep. Okay, so the Queen is showing boards again. Thank you. We're going to do, do one more. And this is the last one. This time it's how many circles can you see? Okay. Okay, so this time looks like we're pretty much all agreed on seven. Um, now, that's just done where we start activity. Just briefly, can anyone explain uh, why this is. Why you got the answer so quickly with this one? Because they're all next to each other and they're regimented. Yeah, exactly. Spot on. They're regimented, they're all in an order. And that's basically the idea behind mind mapping. That's what I try and get across. That one of the key things about mind mapping is being able to take information and put it in a logical order. Because obviously, if you have lots of different groups of information, if you can group the information accurately into whatever groups you like, then it becomes much easier to remember under categories rather than just trying to remember a big clutch of information. And that's me done Mally Park, okay. so thank you. Thank you. Okay, so what I'll talk you through just now is what a mind map is and also how you can use it to help either with a research task or if it's a homework project, hopefully you'll find uh, mind mapping helps in terms of structuring the information that you're looking for. So a mind map is essentially a diagram that's used to organise information. Um, it can be created around one single concept and um, you can draw associated ideas round about it. And the different ideas, these can be used as subheadings if you're um, working on a project. So as an example, um, if we have William Wood High School, uh, this is really the root of the mind map, so this would maybe be the, the main subject that you're looking at. And then from that, something like the feeder primaries would be um, classed as a, a branch of the map and from there you can expand on the feeder primaries to create more branches. So from there there'd be twigs of the mind map and that would be Carrollside, Busby or Netherly if you were looking at the, the feeder primaries. So that is just to give you an example of how the, the mind maps are, are formed and how they can expand. So what we're going to do is get you to work with um, the paper that's in front of you so you can you can put your show me boards aside um, and what we're going to do is get you to create your own mind map to see how the mind maps can be or organised. So in order for it to be an effective mind map it should present the information in a, in a clear and logical way so that you can see clearly what the main topic is and what the associated um, subjects are round about. So, 
what you're going to do is produce your own mind map. Um, the mind maps you're going to be looking at are going to be um, looking at different pop groups. So um, you're going to investigate a pop band, but um, we are going to provide you with um, information <laughs> on one of three bands. So you'll either be researching One Direction, The Vamps, or um, Five Seconds of Summer. If you feel you know enough about them, feel free to refuse the information sheet. <laughs> so the point of the exercise is really we will provide you with all the information that you need and then from that ideally you would use the mind map to structure the information that you're, that you're trying to find out so um, you'll decide the pieces of information you do need um, and also it should be a trigger point if you're ever quizzed about the research that you've been doing visually in your mind you can store the, the, the mind map and hopefully when you need to recall information the mind maps are useful because they give you a uh, sort of triggers to um, remind you of different topics so in this instance you'll think about things like the names of the band members their songs albums different different information like that i'm sure it's all information you're dying to know so we've got three different bands for you to look at um, and you've got the, bit, the bits of paper and the pens on the desk in front of you. So as an example, if you were researching One Direction, you would start off with uh, the band. Then you might choose to research the members. So this would be your branch. So the members would be your branch. And then the different names would be your twigs. And then if it was a project where you had to then research each individual band member, for dates of birth or whatever it might be, then you could expand on that later. So, we're going to come around with your information sheets and it's an exercise that will probably take you seven or eight minutes to do. Um, if you can research their history, the members, their albums and awards based on the information you have in front of you. I will come around to give you a hand. We'll, we'll stop you there, we'll not, we'll not make you research any longer as you breathe a huge sigh of relief. Um, what we're going to do just now is just maybe ask you a bit about how you find that in terms of a, um, a technique to find out different bits of information and whether you feel that the way that you've organised your, your research would help you if you were studying and if it might help you retain, retain the information. Um, I know in some of the mind maps the bigger they get, the, the more information um, round about them. Sometimes it can end up with a, with a lot of detail, uh, which is good for some learners um, retain that information and, and work well that way. For others, I see others have done a series of smaller mind maps for each mm -hmm. section, so they've laid it out slightly differently. So um, I don't know if anyone would like to give some feedback about the, the advantages they found in doing the the research is the main one. It's a good way of sorting out the information quickly. Um, if you've got a lot of information to take in, and I guess you could, you could sort of prioritise what bits are most important. When you when you do your sub levels, colour them differently or something yeah, like yeah, that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Any any other positives? Any other things that people find useful? Just stops you making lists, which mm -hmm. is what you would kind of tend to do normally. And like you say, it's quite mm -hmm. quite easy to find stuff quickly than it would be if it was all in a rote list. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One of the things we always find in English um, is that a lot of people use mind maps for gathering their quotes because they're obsessed when they get to the exam level about, oh, I need to know these quotes. And for higher, for example, when they're having to learn perhaps 40, 50 different quotes from different texts, that's a lot to learn if they're learning them out of context. So if they can put them in a mind map, that makes it very useful because then it's much easier to remember. If they just remember a trigger, then the quotes tend to come back to them. Um, I've, so I need to learn five quotes for this, for this one essay. Oh yeah, that's what I need to do rather than trying to remember them out of context. Um, would they want to share any, if you weren't so keen about the mind maps, any, any disadvantages you could see, potentially? I think the only thing, to me, it actually felt, I mean, I think I did, I think I would remember mm -hmm. stuff better, but I think it made me feel that I was listing it more, actually, rather than listing it less. Mm -hmm. And you might find that, it depends on the kind of essay you're writing, yeah. do you need all that do you need all the names, for instance, or do you need all the history? Yeah. You know, well, I mean, you find it difficult to decide yeah. what you need and what you don't need. 
that's, it's kind of like Helen was saying, it's about, uh, for different learners it works differently about how much information they feel they need to encode, and for the subject how much information they need to encode the mind map. Some people like to go into lots of detail of lots of branches and twigs going all over the place, and some people it's a lot simpler. And I think it just depends mm. on the individual learner's style, if that's, if like headings is enough for them to remember it by, or if obviously they need to go a wee bit deeper into it as well. And what we find, if, uh, particularly for second and third year, um, when pupils are maybe research is something that's maybe uh, <coughs> newer to them, what they find is the mind maps are good for giving them subheadings and giving structure to a project because they can maybe be given a heading or a sort of broad subject and they don't really know how to approach it. Mm -hmm. So it's really about getting them to break down the different topics within it. And then from there, even if it gives them a bit of structure um, to, the, to the outline of their project, and then from there, they can include the detail under each heading. So, can I just ask you, there is a, a mapping thing you can put on computers. Yeah, do there's some. Do children have that? There's it's, it's software, software that, um, software that you can do. use. There's loads of them. There's yeah. apps yeah. as well. Yeah. We, we do have, we do have mind mapping software on the computers. I'm not I'm not convinced it's the most up to date yeah. one yeah. that we do have we do have mind mapping. Sometimes it's been too long. I, I'm sorry, I'm a bit of a I, I, I'm a lecturer in a yeah. college, so my students sometimes yeah. use it, and uh, they spend so long making the mind maps yeah. look nice <laughs> on the software no. that they yeah. kind of forget the content. Doing it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean that that's one of the things that a person was coming around about. Um, See the different. We're talking about different styles of mind maps. So some people are automatically very visual, mm -hmm. um, sort of drawing sort of nice patterns around the bubble stuff. And that whereas other people are just more getting the information. And again, as was that comes down to sort of different learning styles comes down to the way different people learn. And provided I think the students aren't using um, four hours decorating a mind map, highlighting different colours, just get it actually working. And then usually it works quite well. When I'm studying, um, I would usually make a mind map, and by doing so, I would usually have a general sort of unit, so unit one, unit two, unit three. And then from that, I would go into different sort of topics within that. And then once I've got that, I would then go into detail on each one. So everything's really clear and you can basically see the full unit in one page. So it's really easy to study. You don't have to go through loads of notes and getting them lost. It's all on one page and you can go through everything in one go. It's just so much easier. Here I've got the, the main unit. Um, in the centre and then coming off of that I'll have the sort of smaller topics within that unit and then from that I'll go into more detail and start to explain things on the page and a lot of time I'll draw little diagrams to make it sort of easier to visualise or give examples of things uh, just so you can really have quite a lot of clarity and um, it, there'll be a lot more imagery on the page which you can relate to a lot easier. From first year right through to advanced hires um, I think that throughout the course of each year, um, the best thing to do is just add things as you go. So you'd have maybe each unit, say units one, two and three uh, of the subject you're doing that year. And as you go through that unit, you would gradually add each topic and then go into the detail. So by the end of the course, you'd have, say, three mind maps from each unit. And then you'd have everything all in three pages uh, to study for your prelims and also your final exams.